Championship week presented by 7-Up continues on a clear, tranquil evening outside the Levy Center here in the Bay Area of California. But inside, they are revved up. The St. Mary's fans hoping that the Gales can win a school record 26th game. And the Gonzaga fans all the way down from Spokane hoping that the Bulldogs, led by Roni Turioff, can win the seventh West Coast Conference Tournament for the Zags. beat San Diego to get to this point and last night St. Mary's outlasting Santa Clara on their home floor to make it once again to the title game. Hi everybody, Terry Gannon along with Jimmy Dykes and Jimmy. The Zags, they're already in. They're going to the NCAA tournament. How about the Gales? Gonzaga, a solid three or four seed no matter what happens in this ball game. St. Mary's, you have to remember this. Last year, Utah State had 25 wins and were left out of the big dance. St. Mary's wins tonight, eliminate all the questions. So you don't think it's a lock right Not now, but yet. certainly Not will yet. be if they win. Our star watch, Daniel Kickert, had 17 last night, all in the second half. Adam Morrison went off, 25 points, eight assists. Kickert, one of the few guys in the country, Terry, that's shooting 50% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, and an 80% free throw shooter. Adam Morrison showed me last night you don't want to hack him off. If you hack him off, yeah. he can really put big numbers on you. Check out our starting lineups. Kickert with an injured ankle, but is out there playing. He will not match up defensively with Morrison. Marigny, by the way, Paul Marigny had 20 and 10 in the win last night. And J.P. Batista for Gonzaga had 24 points and 10 rebounds. He was big. Scores of Gonzaga fans making the way all the way down 15 hours to drive from Spokane looking for another West Coast Conference Tournament title. Roni Turioff, the player of the year in the West Coast Conference had only two points, five rebounds in the semifinal win. He was in foul trouble last night. The Zags control the opening tip, Jimmy. St. Mary's will be physical on the defensive end. They will reach, grab, bump cutters. You better be strong with that basketball. Turioff and the foul. Paul Marigny coming over to help out from the weak side. So Turioff will go to the free throw line, and the Zags have dominated in the all-time series. They've won 18 of the last 19, but they split the series this year with St. Mary's. 7-0 all-time in the West Coast Conference Tournament against St. Mary's. Remember Mark Hugh told us this afternoon that the He's got to make sure his inside guys get going in this ball game early. He doesn't want to get caught up in a perimeter shooting contest with St. Mary's. As a result, Turioff gets the first touch. St. Mary's won at home by eight in the first matchup this year. And Gonzaga winning by five at home on February 3rd. But in the first matchup, when St. Mary's won, they had 16 three-pointers. They shot lights out. They were only three out of 19 last night in the semis was the team in blue. Normally, a team that shoots that poorly will come back the next night and shoot well. Here's Kicker. He can shoot it a little bit long this time. And the rebound going to Adam Morrison. You must rebound with the Zags above all other things. Plus 10 on the boards for the year per game. Turi off. Kicking it out to Earl Knight, but out of control. So the first foul committed by Ronnie Turioff. The senior from Martinique and Paris has a history of picking up some silly fouls early in ball games. Mark, you talking to him about it. Don't over penetrate from 20 feet out on the floor. He was out much of the first half in the semifinal win over San Diego. Doesn't want to be there in this championship game. 
Curry off. Matched up with Kickard on the block. Pretty good matchup. Batista over to help. Frederick Ajuanu. And Batista the rebound. Contact no call. Here come the Zags. Knight and the strip by Roland, but he fouled him. EJ Roland picks up his first. That's what I really like about Gonzaga here. I think they can play any style you throw at them. They can run with you if you want to run. They can grind it out in the half court and pound it to the low block if you want to get in one of those kind of ball games. Ravio is terrific at knowing who he's throwing the ball to ahead in transition. Whether it's Morrison or Knight, he understands his personnel and gives those guys the ball in their comfort zone. As good as this front line has been for the Zags, I, I do think the key this year has been Derek Ravio. Blake Stepp. Another one in the long line of great guards moving on from Gonzaga and Livio taking over. Certainly doesn't look the part, as you said last night. In fact, there's a sign in the stands tonight from one of the Gales fans that says, please feed Livio. <laughs> he needs a few pounds. It's appropriate. Jonathan Sanders going baseline and Morrison with the hole. So his first foul, Randy Bennett, it is fourth year as the head coach at St. Mary's trying to win his first West Coast Conference Tournament title. Five and three all-time in the tournament. They won back in 97 and went to the NCAA Tournament. They've gone to the NCAAs three times in their history. Marigny left his feet, came back down. Good job of getting out after a catch-and-shoot specialist in Marigny. Caught that basketball, ran in with hard pressure and forced to travel. He was only four for 15 in the semifinal game last night. Scored 20 points, had 10 rebounds, great double-double, but he did not shoot well. No one shot well. And that, yeah. They shot 30% as a team. Here's Turioff with the fadeaway. A high-energy guy, and if he makes his first couple of baskets, he becomes a very high-energy guy, does Turioff. Kicker. Set up and shoot. You can't let him have that much time. Daniel Kicker. First team all-conference performer, the junior from Melbourne, Australia. Boy, his buddy from Old Dominion Lawton had a heck of a game tonight earlier on our air, didn't he? Yeah, huge numbers. Knight off the heel. And cleared by Blake Schulberg, who's coming off the bench for Randy Bennett. Great atmosphere here in Santa Clara. Full house. Student sections well represented. There's Kicker with another three. He is always a trail-to-play three threat. Got a little bit of a moving screen up top. They gave him room. He's got six. Here's Rivio going baseline. Out to Batista, junior from Brazil. Morrison yet to get a shot off. Sanders rips <laughs> right into Batista. Schulberg another rebound. What a scream. Schulberg's third rebound off the bench already. St. Mary's made three threes total last night. They've already made two in this ball game. Again, Mark Few does not want to get into a perimeter shooting contest. Kicker, they didn't get out on him. Turn off was late. He's three for three beyond the arc. Jimmy, you can't get screened. They need help getting it in. And before they got it in, Mark Few calls timeout. And now he's arguing, saying, I didn't want the timeout. And is really upset with his club, actually. Kicker, a terrific shooter. Again, over 40% from the three point line. As this ball comes up, let it roll, guys, and we're going to talk about their, what they do in transition. Now, hold it right here. Schulberg's going to actually be a moving screen and just drift in right behind the moving screen does kicker. Turioff doesn't get out on him, and again, that's a 40-plus percent three-point guy that you've got to make sure your heels are above the three-point line when you match with him in transition. Same thing last time for Turioff doesn't recover, and kicker makes him play. He's 6'10", but he's that... 56 three-pointers during the regular season and uh, there's what I was talking about 16 of 27 in that first matchup when St. Mary's beat Gonzaga and that is really their their most impressive victory this year an eight-point win over the Zags yeah if I'm Randy Bennett I, I do not celebrate yet coming in this ball game thinking that I'm a lock crazy things can happen those power conferences can pull strings that the WCC the Mountain West the Missouri Valley that those other conferences cannot pull Mark Few really upset with his club defensively more than anything in that last puddle. You could tell not getting out on kicker. Three separate occasions. Screen and roll. Batista gathered himself and walked. So the Zags, not very impressive in the early going here. 
Well, St. Mary's plays that aggressive style on both ends, Terry, that, that can sometimes get you out of your natural rhythm and natural flow. They try to speed you up defensively, and so far they've done a pretty good job of it. Pickard had 17 and 12 in two matchups with Gonzaga this season. Jonathan Sanders again going baseline. Good defense by Morrison this time. Schaubert, another rebound, his fourth, and the putback. Batista got too uh, close to the rim. Morrison got it. How pure a shooter is Adam Morrison, the sophomore from Spokane. The other problem with St. Mary's is they are a terrific off-the-bounce club. They've got catch-and-shoot guys that really feed off some guys that can penetrate and kick. They're a tough guard in the half court. E.J. Rowland, who had 13 in the semifinal, went last night and gets his first bucket this time. And the whistle after the bucket. And Randy Bennett said, I'm not sure what time out, but uh, they'll talk things over. The Gale's impressive early on, 13-7. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. And in part by Cialis. Cialis is here. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. And the 2006 Harley-Davidson Street Rod. Born on the track, raised on the street. Five-point game here in the early going. The officials uh, checking on that last. Uh, that's why the confusion there. They were checking to see whether Adam Morrison's foot was on the line. It wasn't. It was a three. So it's credited with that. It's 13-8. Most clubs man-to-man -man defense so far in this ball game. They will sprinkle in like a salt and pepper zone at times, but they prefer the man. Sean Mallon off the bench. Well, the hot shooting really going for St. Mary's. Turry off all the way. To the hoop. He's got six. Hey, that's what he could, could not do for about six weeks this year with those bad ankles. Was still confident enough to attack the rim and not worry about where he's coming down. He's back to his old form. But Jimmy, how many times do you see it happen with a team? What that did, it, it gave J.P. Batista more of the load, and he really came out. He's a better player there, a better team because of it. Yeah, that's the depth that the Gonzaga has that most clubs, if you want to call them mid-major, do not. Morrison running one-hander from Rivio. He's got five. He is faster foot speed than you would think. The guy can run. Better athlete, better leaper than you think, and uh, he's grown a couple inches this year, too. Defending Sanders. There's the ISO for Sanders, a drive on Morrison. Roland, Rivio didn't get there. E.J. Roland. He's got five. They're lighting it up. They run the weave out top as Mallon's left open. Kicker clears it. Much different game, huh, than St. Mary's last night against Santa Clara. It was a game in which there were 59 fouls called. There were 80 missed shots. They shot 30% and only had four assists and one. You know, 59 fouls that were called. Another 25 or 30 that were not. <laughs> Probably. Rivio. Oh, terrific. Allen can't get it to go. Here comes Marigny. The senior from Oakland over Terrio. Boy, he can make uh, tough shots on you. Marigny, he shoots shots that you think defensively I got him covered, and he can still stick it on you. Strong player. 6'3", 195. Looks even bigger than that. Another floater for Morrison. How about He's got that? About every shot. Being under control at the end of the drive. Look out. Schulberg running the floor, though. And you don't see the Zags big man beating down the floor very often. Last night, St. Mary's did not look like an NCAA tournament type team to me. So far tonight, through seven minutes, they do. Now, if they would have lost that game, the semifinal against Santa Clara, and it went down to the wire as Morrison misses, and Roland comes up with it. I'm not sure they would be in. It would not have been a good lasting impression for that selection committee. Yep. Marigny got another one. 
St. Mary's on fire from beyond the arc. Mariki's got five, and the lead is nine. Terry, that's the danger of playing the Gales. They can make shots when you absolutely have them covered well. Watch the drive by Marigny right here again, the, the ability to make tough shots. Terry off elevates at 6'11", and he still gets it off. He's a 6'3 guard. I mean, look at that. From way deep, I'm talking beyond NBA range, Mar Marigny answers on the next possession. Five of seven from three-point land are the Gales. And, and that is how they beat Gonzaga the first time around. You look at their tournament resume and the RPI 31, Jimmy. Well, that, that's what's a very solid number. The schedule strength is not great. Prior to this ball game, the best win was Gonzaga. Out at Cal is not a great win. Everyone beat them this year. And uh, I think that's why they still have some work to do to feel absolutely certain they're in the big dance. They're playing like it with the urgency so far. They played some people who they thought were going to be good. Yeah, right. But it, as it turns out, you know, some of the programs expect to be good were not this year. Last night, Gonzaga shot 65% in the first half. Tonight at St. Mary's, they're shooting 64% right now. Pierre Marie Altador Cespedes in the lineup, but Morrison gets the shooter's roll and he gets that a lot. The soft touch, he's got nine. Well, you're right. Two or three times a game, his ball will hit and almost stick on that rim and get that friendly bounce. Solberg's done a nice job off the bench. Not going to shoot that three, though. Jason Wahlberg, a junior from Fresno, also in the lineup for Randy Bennett. What well, very good spacing by St. Mary's, allowing them some of those driving kick opportunities so far. Difficult to help on the drives right now. Wahlberg almost walked. Good defense by the Zags. Rowland, can he even get it off? Wild three, and... Shot clock violation, great defensive possession. And sometimes it's not a dunk or a three-pointer, but a stop like that that can get a team going. Morrison hopes so. Seven-point lead here in the championship game for the Gales of St. Mary's. Trying to get their 26th win of the season. That would be a school record. Out to the early lead, Marigny leading the way. Well, they have come out to shoot that basketball, a club that averages 21 points a game from the three-point line. They already have 15 of them so far from beyond the arc. Gonzaga tardy early in this ball game, recovering out the shooters and getting a hand up and discouraging them. But when you're 6'10", like Kickert, he can still knock down shots over good defense. They're going to get a rest right now. Saw the shooting numbers and kicker three out of four beyond the arc so far. St. Mary's doing a nice job on the glass as well. Seven to four they lead in that category. Pretty much have dictated the pace and just about everything here in the first half of the first half. Rivio. Good recovery by the defense. Ajuwanu trying to push Batista off the block and forces the walk. That's another turnover and that's three. A reminder championship week presented by 7-Up, continuing Wednesday on ESPN. Big East Conference Championship presented by Aero Postal. Providence, West Virginia, Seton Hall, Georgetown, Rutgers, Notre Dame, and some teams involved there, Jimmy, obviously, but uh, still scrambling to try to make the tournament. Yeah, they are pulling for the Pacifics and the Utahs of the world. Those leagues that look like they're probably only a one-team league right now, and that's what the big dogs are hoping for. Collins with the miss. Good defense by the Zags. Last couple of possessions. And in this championship game, even though St. Mary's maybe not a lot, most people do think that they're in the tournament. So no matter who wins here, probably will have two from the West Coast Conference. Well, what helps St. Mary's is they're coming out of the number seven RPI league overall, and I'm pretty sure they'll get more than one team. But here's some of these clubs that you'll see on our network all week long fighting for that extra win or two to put in front of the selection committee on their resume. And again, those power teams, those BCF conferences now, they can do things that some of the other uh, non-power leagues can't. Juanu picked up a foul, but also got the rebound a moment ago. Here's Kickert along the baseline. Yeah, it certainly hold a lot of weight. Rolling. Kicker for three. They didn't get there. Got another one. That's his fourth. 
absolutely cannot let that happen. Batista got buried, and then his effort to recover was about 70%. And it wasn't a great effort. Yeah, you're right, just to get out there. I mean, he didn't scramble to get there. Morrison, good defense by Collins. Overzealous, though, picked up the foul, but on the floor. So the first foul on uh, Brett Collins. So you watch his last possession. Uh, Kicker's going to work around around the top of the screen here. And as he works, Batista right here is guarding number 13. Now hold it right here, guys. He's worried about the monster on a guy that's not of low post score, and he's got to recover to the shooter. Not a good decision by Batista. Got to know the personnel and where they can hurt you on the floor. Rivio. Three-pointer. Derek Rivio, who can shoot at 71 three-pointers in the regular season for Rivio. He had 14 in the semifinal game last night. Look at the numbers from beyond the arc. Marigny just lets it fly. That might not be the shot that Bennett wanted. Out the door, Cespedes, great dish, and Turi off the payoff. Boy, drove that ball hard, didn't he? Made that uh, backline defender commit one way and gave it up. Terrific play. Got some life now, the Zags do. Turi off with eight. This time to the zone, Jimmy. First time we've seen it. If you're going to play zone, you better make sure you know where personnel is, guys that can shoot it. Marigny behind wants the ball. Kicker going to let it fly. Oh, oh, nice. He's got five three-pointers. Talked to me before the ball game. I said, how do you feel? He said, I'm fine. That was an understatement. Five of six beyond the arc. Look at the St. Mary's numbers from long range. Pretty good intensity in this game, huh? The first half. Ajuanu knocks it away. Randy Bennett saying it's their ball, but the guy in the striped shirt saying no, it's not. And he's got the final say. Transition basket again. Great job by uh, Cespedes to get that defender to bite just a little bit. As soon as he leaned right, Cespedes went left with the ball, and there's the answer. Boom. 6'10, shooting over 6'10. Turning off just thinking, there's no way he's going to let it fly from there. But tonight he is. Batista and one. Daniel Kickert the foul. And Batista will go to the line. And Terry, I, again, I go back to the fact that Batista is a guy that not a lot of top ten clubs have depth in that low block. I mean, a terrific finish off the miss by Terry off type kid is Batista. Major player for the Zags. Five point game and now a little pressure up the floor. If it weren't for the name on the front of the uniforms for St. Mary's, I would think it's a completely different team than was in the building last night. They left them open again, Jimmy. No. Not number six. Might get another chance here, though. He's just hanging outside waiting yeah. for a shot. That's all he's doing. And you've got to guard him right now like a two guard. Stay attached. Can't beat Batista to the hole, though. Turi off clears it. Altidore Cespedes from Montreal, who had a big night last night. Had a career high of nine, including three three-pointers. Batista over kicker. Nice job. Soft touch. Wasn't that a beautiful shoulder fake? Didn't get in a hurry. Sold the hard left shoulder fake and came back right under control. And you saw the Brazilian flag. You think Ronaldo and Ronaldinho were playing out here, but it's for Batista, who's from Brazil, went to Barton Community College and had a big year. <laughs> you can hear the anticipation in the crowd every time he gets it. Marigny, he buys it. Paul Marigny with eight. And the eighth three-pointer of the first half for the Gales. Same recipe that uh, beat the Zags one other time this year. They have it going right now. Ajuanu uh, with the foul down on the block. Kicker number five over Turriot, who said, not from that far. Oh, yeah. Night for Aussies. St. Mary's up six early in this ballgame, flat out shooting it from downtown. 
the third key in this ball game from the Zags' point of view. No catch and shoot threes by St. Mary's tonight. We've already seen several of them. There was one, there's another one. Just Tari to get out on him, kick it another catch, eye it, shoot it. The release, the rotation, the result, dead on. Catch and shoot. The Zags talked about this afternoon. They have not defended it tonight. How different tonight is from last night. The semifinal win over Santa Clara. They shot 30%. It, it was just, to be frank, an ugly basketball game, but they're rolling tonight. Title on the line, and the, the Gales have been eliminated five of the last six years in this tournament by Gonzaga. These two met for the title last year, and it's the fourth straight year here in the West Coast Conference Championship game that the top two seeds are meeting. Wow. Rivio. Rivio's got six. Little guy's got guts, doesn't he? I'm telling you. Gets hit hard off a ball screen and bounces right back for a in your face three. Schoberg, who's played well off the bench, out to Marigny, and the Zags back to the man to man. Paul Marigny, David Pendergraft, the freshman from Brewster, Washington, on the foul. Ravio may be one of the hardest workers that uh, Mark Fuse ever had at Gonzaga. Watch him get bumped here, gets knocked off of his path, boom, right there. But he comes right back at you. And again, another guy that if you don't recover too quickly and make sure your heels are above the three point line, he'll stick it in your grill. First team all conference player this year, Turioff was. He was the player of the year. And Morrison was as well. So uh, all three of those guys. How big is this zone of a gamble by Mark Few? Switching it up, going back to the zone this time. Better know where number 14 is. And number 11. And number 11 <laughs> as well. There goes number 11 to the back side. Can he get it here? Yeah, not quick enough. There's kick it though. In and out. You want, you know a guy's on when he runs down to the other end, and he can't believe that he missed the shot. Batista the follow in and out. Curry off his foul. Flying around that rim is number one in white. That's his game. Women's Big East Championship presented by State Farm coming your way Tuesday at 7 Eastern. Number 14 taking on number nine, UConn. And Rutgers, that should be a good one. And then at 9 Eastern, the Horizon League Championship, Detroit and UW-Milwaukee Championship Week, presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. UW-Milwaukee, one of those clubs with a 52 RPI, but their strength of schedule is 226. So that tells you right there, they better win to get in. Yep. I'm, I'm not sold on the strength of schedule numbers as, when you look at teams. I, Oftentimes they don't make sense to me. Well, it doesn't and it really hurts clubs that are in those non-power conferences Just like in this league Gonzaga and St. Mary's both could beat Loyola Marymount who's in seventh or eighth position and their RPI get higher Yeah, but they have to play him because they're in their league Go figure And the committee will tell you it's one of several factors in that room on selection Sunday just one Rowland, Schoberg, the whistle and the foul. And the foul. Uh, Pendergraft picked up two quick fouls. In the freshman. You know, in defense of St. Mary's, Santa Clara plays a style that absolutely forces you to stay out of rhythm for 40 minutes. They did a great job of it last night. But now we're seeing the true St. Mary's club in a rhythm, running some stuff, guarding pretty well. Terrific job so far by Randy Bennett's club. Marigny on the miss. Pendergraft didn't block him out. They get another shot clock and possession. Kickert, by the way, just went to the bench, picked up his second foul on that last possession. So now in, in this zone, looks like going back to the man perhaps, but... Either way, you don't have to be aware of where number 14 is on the floor. He's not on the floor. Now, 21 and 11 now are your three-point shooters. There's 21. Hendler grabbed the rebound. St. Mary's is yet to bend to the... It's going to the free throw line. Morrison walks. Fourth turnover for the Zags. 
And Adam Morrison not able to really get the groove in the first half. I think if you're going to guard Morrison, you've got to have to be physical with him. When he puts that ball in the deck, you've got to challenge him. Because if you get on your heels a little bit, this is a guy that really knows the game. He can feed off of it and get himself to the free throw strike. Back to the starting lineup from Mark Few and Gonzaga. Marigny comes back, big hop step, gets it back. And rolling. That's the difference. It was Ajuanu who was out there instead of kicker. He's no threat. And they're searching right now, Jimmy. They have made a six, seven passes per possession at times in this game. Last night it was one pass and a jack. Collins with the miss, and you do get the, the sense that without Kickert out there right now, they're not quite sure where the offense is going to come from. So Gonzaga just down two, weathering the storm. 347 left until the break. Randy Bennett may have to bring Kickert back in. We'll see. All right, Carl, yeah, Chris Paul for that uh, incident in the, the NC State game. Uh, not going to the ACC tournament. Get more on that from Carl at the half. St. Mary's one for 16 from beyond the arc last night. Tonight, eight for 16. Jimmy, Terry, look at this. The three teams up top with obviously good RPIs and strength of schedules compared to the three teams we're going to show on the bottom with higher RPIs and higher strength of schedules. Surprisingly, Miami of Ohio, Northern Iowa, and Kent State are the teams up top right here, and they're not even mentioned for possible at-large bursts. And Virginia Tech, Minnesota, and Iowa State are because they're attached to a power conference. That's why if I'm Randy Bennett, I'm concerned with this ball game tonight. We don't want to leave it in the hands of the selection committee because the power attached to these teams right here is understated, I think, on the national level. Big 10, Big 12, and the ACC, they can do things that the Miami Ohio's and Northern Iowa's and Kent State's cannot. Just like Utah State last year with 25 wins and an RPI in the mid-40s, they were left out to watch on Sunday. I sense in your voice a certain tone that says you don't agree with that. No, I, I, I don't. But, uh, you know, that's just how it is. And those power conferences have the built-in quality wins in their schedule. I'm not saying that they're not deserving. I'm saying if you're a mid-major, take nothing for granted. Yeah, the Virginia Tech numbers, too, are, are kind of shocking when you really look at them. Because they obviously have had some big wins this year in the ACC. Yeah. Roland trying to take it all the way in. And the foul on Earl Knight. So you've got 325 until halftime. And Daniel Kicker with the two fouls on the bench. And certainly, Randy Bennett doesn't want to bring him back in and probably shouldn't. But it is tempting at some point if you struggle offensively and see that lead that you've built up whittle the way. Because the, the last couple of trips down until this one, Jimmy, they really were searching for someone who wanted to score. Right. I haven't seen any conversation among the assistants to Randy. Yeah saying anything like the coach let's stick him back in there. I think they realize let's uh, make sure we're in this ball game with 20 minutes to go and our star can play more basketball. Those were the first two free throws shot in the game by St. Mary's and Marini one for two. So a two point lead with just over three left here in the first. Zach's tried to run America's play post up a guy on one lock on block and then double down for a shooter and St. Mary's right on top of it. That officially America's play? It's called America's play because you know what? Every team in America has that in their set play. That's right. <laughs> Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal Wednesday. There are your matchups. Providence and West Virginia Seton Hall, Georgetown and Rutgers Notre Dame. Always a great tournament. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, we talked about it last night. I, this is my favorite week, even more so than the first week of the NCAA tournament with the conference championships. Watch the action from the Garden and the ACC tournament and, and all the discussion over who's in yeah. and who's not. It's endless. Morrison has not been hot in the first half here. Off the door, Cespedes had it taken away. Here comes Paul Marigny. Oh, leading the break. Shoulder. Great look for Marigny. I mean, that was a great pass and maybe even a better catch by a 6'11 guy running full speed. Having to reach down for yeah. a bounce pass, huh, on the break? Not sure about his skip back down to the other end, but everything else up to that point was good. 
Curry off. She's a go in and out. Knocked out. It'll be Gale's basketball. I mean, a seven-footer gets out in front of transition. Watch the pass here by Marigny. Schoberg's going to come into play right here. A low pass. He had to pick it up at his knees, and he's a seven-footer. Terrific play by 33 in blue. Yeah, so often you see a guard lob it up in that instance, and the guy will be able to go up and get it. That is a tough pass to catch and handle. Reno Rolini into the lineup for Randy Bennett now. My common sense index told me last night when I watched the team in blue play, they didn't look like an NCAA tournament team. They have convinced me so far the first 18 minutes of this ball game. Boy, you are really fair weather, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you are so easy to sway. <laughs> There's the foul, and Red Collins picking that one up as Morrison takes it in. But you're right, there's no question. It, it, and if that were the last thing, yep. the last impression, that game last night against Santa Clara, they, they might have been in trouble. I think Randy Bennett knows it as well. Uh, this guy has done a great job of winning more games every year that he's been on that campus. And he can taste it right now, getting that burst. That really sets him up to be maybe the next head coach for a lot of jobs that start popping up around the country. At least a candidate. Yeah. A couple of years as an assistant at St. Louis. He was at Pepperdine and San Diego in this league. Morrison in double figures and four out of seven. He hasn't had quite the same impact on this game as he normally does, but still getting it done. And now 11. So many factors, Terry, as you mentioned in that selection committee's eyes. Right now, you can make a strong case for St. Mary's. You can make a strong case against St. Mary's. That's what you have to eliminate tonight if you're with the Gales. I'd put them in, even if they lose tonight. They get 25 wins on the year. In the number seven RPI league, so I'm with you. Schulberg, one-on-one -on -one with Mallon. Rolini who played 11 minutes, and he hadn't played much all year. He played 11 minutes last night. Now he's in against Gonzaga. Rolling off balance, not the shot they're looking for. And that's the defender that Earl Knight brings to the floor for Gonzaga. The ability to delete the drive. Curry off that step back. There's the help from Roland on the double. The whistle as they try to stop Rabio. Rolimi picks up his first. So the title game here in the West Coast Conference, Terry Gannon along with Jimmy Dykes a minute 11 until the break Gonzaga trying to win for the seventh time in this tournament they've won five of the last six and St. Mary's won back in 97 the last time they had gone to the NCAA tournament they were in the championship game last year but were beaten by the Zags look at Derek Ravio on that free throw strike that was the question mark spot for Gonzaga coming in. That's why the word out of the WCC this year was the Zags are beatable. But they counted out how good this kid has made himself into a player. 38 minutes a game in conference play, only two turnovers a ball game in a pretty freewheeling offense. And if you're St. Mary's right now, you're going to be a little bit worried. I mean, you've played maybe not as well as you possibly can play but pretty darn close to it in this first half and shot lights out from beyond the arc and yet it's a one-point game with under a minute to go to the break Collins just fell down <laughs> and Knight well, he got the ball he got Collins he got a little extra no call no call a jump ball and the jump ball is between Knight's arms and hands and Collins legs <laughs> Any way you can tie it up, it stays at this end. Watch this. I talked about the importance of Knight as a defender. That's what he can do. He can match up with your best driver <laughs> and shut you down. There it is. The knees tied up the hands of Earl Knight. Doesn't matter how you do it, I guess, huh? Seven and counting on the shot clock. Offensive foul on Sanders. A team full of drivers, but Sanders is not one of them. He's a 12 foot and in offensive guy. So you get him doing work off the bounce. Defensively, you've done your assignment if you're Gonzaga. And you're 
four second difference here, Jim. You would think just by watching the game and not the scoreboard, St. Mary's would be up six, seven, eight points. Not the case. Yeah. Morrison from deep beyond the arc. And it's St. Mary's basketball. So they can hold it for the last shot here in the first half. I think they'd be wise to do it. They're going to bring Kickard in this last possession. Not a threat to foul as a spot up shooter. A little bit of a gamble, but the gamble could pay off with a huge three point make at the end of this half. And if you pick up a charge, keep running to the locker room. Yeah, the assistant coaches should have been on Kickard as he went past saying, do not put the ball on the deck and try to create. You can catch and shoot fine. Other than that, don't worry about it. Kicker drifting to the far corner, trying to spot up and taking Mallon with him. Here's the screen for Roland. Back out. Collins, no. Batista clears it. And there's your first half. So it's a, a one-point game. Great half for Daniel Kicker. Five of eight from three-point land, 15 points, but Jimmy, all of those were in the first 11 minutes of the game. He hasn't scored since then. So Mark Few trying to win the tournament title once again, down by one. We go to Carl Ravitch in the studio. Carl. Hi, David, thank you very much. This is Championship Week. It is presented by 7-Up, and the halftime report starts out with somebody who's not gonna be able to be playing in the first game. It's Chris Paul. We'll tell you about him when we come back. A reminder, the celebrations continue across the country. Men's and women's teams qualifying to get into the NCAA tournament. We'll run down the whole list. We'll give you the Chris Paul story when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by Lexus and their passionate pursuit of perfection. And Napster. Try Napster to go, the world's first portable music service, for free at Napster.com. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues. St. Mary's had a one-point lead at the break. Gonzaga has now taken the lead by three. Got the Brazilian flag at one end for Batista, and at the other end on the St. Mary's <laughs> side, the Aussie flag for Daniel Kicker. Uh, only during championship week do you see things like that. Very fitting. Now, if you're St. Mary's here in the second half, and you're Randy Bennett, what are you telling your club after you've given up the lead here? Well, I think you've got to stay very aggressive. You can't start playing the game not to lose. Kicker's got to keep roaming around that perimeter, maybe use him as a screener to free him up. Just freed up Marigny, who can't buy it. Morris entangles with Collins. Collins wins this one. Brett Collins swatted away again by Turion. Here come the Zags. Rivio leading the way. Morrison stops. Oh, yeah. Adam Morrison from Rivio. Morrison's got 20. Early in the year, I thought he and Francisco Garcia were the best three men in college basketball. Adam Morrison now is the best three man in college basketball, in my opinion. He gets whistled for the foul. A little lazy on the defensive end that time. Let Collins go by him. He just has that extra grittiness and toughness that's hard to find on the collegiate level night in and night out. Absolutely hates to lose in anything he does in practice or in a game. St. Mary's not getting it done at the free throw line. Not going there very often in this game. One for three. And that's something they've done well on the year, Terry. Plus 180 attempts over their opponents night in and night out yep. all year long and the, the Zags have done a good job of defending without fouling which is another key for them in this ball game. Don't bail out those questionable shots that St. Mary's may take on you. The Levy Center alive tonight. Rivey a way off balance. Batista over Kicker to have the two fouls. Maybe didn't challenge him. Rolling out of bounds when he took it away. Now at this point, you got 14.37 left. If you're kicker, you can't think about those two fouls. No. And he just backed up. And 
Knight. Rowan. Look how quick EJ Rowan is. Marigny didn't look like his shot. Looked like he changed it midair. Tell you what, Batista and Terry off both can really run the floor. And they do it well going both directions. Rivio blocked from behind. Batista follows from behind. JP Batista, they'll be waving the Brazilian flag now. Timeout, Randy Bennett. Largest lead for the Zags. There it is, JP Batista, the junior from Brazil. Rivio misses. JP's right there. Back in a minute. The Zags starting to push out just a little bit now. With six minutes gone in this second half. Watch J.P. Batista. He's 6'8 and about 265, but watch the effort. Appreciate the big guy to run 94 feet, be there for the rebound, going to make the outlet pass, and here he comes again. Not going to set a speed record, but he runs both directions, and as a result, watch the finish. I salute the effort by J.P. Batista. Now, have you reached your uh, your quota of big man compliments for the night? Yeah, that's You're right. out of them, right? Yeah, at two point guards, you and I, we only have to give one a night, and there it was. Back to Rivio on the guards now. Here's Knight. <laughs> Dangerous time in the game for the Gales. This lead at seven. Obviously, need a stop or two, and then to get Kickert back into the offense, he's on the bench right now. Foul away. An offensive foul away from the ball. Earl Knight picking up his second. And the third team for Gonzaga. Without kicker, someone else has to make a shot. They've got to make a play. You set the check in, but they need points out of this possession, even if it's just one free throw. Paul Marigny, who shot 50% on the year last night, was 4 of 15, and tonight Marigny's just 3 of 11. Not a bad time for him to start shooting well. Walker, there's Knight with the reach. So the reach before the walk, at least in the opinion of the official, that's his third. His third, and for the Bulldogs, their fourth. And Kicker will come back into the game. There he is. Well, you can see the game change in the first half without Kicker, especially at the offensive end, and the same thing here in the few minutes he's been out in the second half. Again, I think you start using Kicker as a screener and let him pick and pop, because he can pick and pop with the best of them in this part of the country. Turning off stays right with him. Rowan, pretty quick, behind the screen, no. Big rebound for Roney. He's got nine. You can see Morrison wanting to take over this game in the second half, and has for the most part. Another whistle away from the ball, this time down on the block. And Ajuanu picking up his third. Or when a Turioff posts up on the low block and you get Morrison on the same side with him, talk about a tough two-man game to handle. That's it. Roney can't get it. Here come the Gales. Yeah, it's basic basketball, but it's, it's awfully tough to defend. Pick and choose. Can't double off of either one. Morrison with the push. Adam with three. And Mary's really cooling off in the second half. Zaga has consistently shot that ball at 50% as a team overall in the top five shooting clubs in the nation. All five guys can score after Honest Garden for 40 minutes. That was Morrison's second, by the way. Swatted away, and it starts the break. Where's Adam going to go? Nowhere, as it turns out. Altidore Cespedes over to Rivio at deep three off the heel. Adam will let it fly. Uh-uh. See if St. Mary's could take advantage. They've been cold. And Rowan lost it. It was tipped. Fortunately, the Gales get it back. They're down seven. They got to go, though.
Seven point lead for the Zags here in the second half. Trying to win another title here in the West Coast Conference, our direct TV game track. St. Mary's with nine three pointers, but they had eight by halftime, Jimmy. I think this right here is maybe the story of this ball game. Kicker got off to a hot shooting start, and since then, Zags have done a nice job of scrambling out, getting jersey to jersey with him, and taking away those open three point looks. Morrison continues to be the star for this Gonzaga team. Ijuanu can't get it to go out of the timeout. Block Marigny. That's blocked, but a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. They haven't been there often. Just one out of four on the evening at the line for the Gales. David Pendergraft picks up his third foul. Got to give some credit to Mark Few for the fact that Daniel Kickert has only got the three points in the last 17 minutes. Making sure your defense centers around him because it did not in the first right. 10 minutes of the game. No, again, I think they were so concerned the first half maybe with not being overly aggressive defensively and, and allowing St. Mary's to stay in the game from the free throw strike. Don't foul their bad shots. They maybe started off a little tentative. Yeah. I'm not so sure about halfway through that first half. He said, hey, if we foul them, foul them. But I want to check their breath from right from this point on, and they've done it. One for six from the line for St. Mary's tonight. Ajuanu ends up on his backside and picks up the foul. Maybe the best argument for St. Mary's that they lose this game. They're coming out of the number seven RPI conference. Only the BCS schools conferences are above them. So Randy Bennett knows Conference USA's and folks like that that are going to get multiple teams in are below them in the pecking order on their RPI conference list. That has to help them. The common sense index may help St. Mary's as much as anything when it's all said and done. You think that comes into play, do you? I think it does. I got to hope. Rivia with the miss. Pendergrass. Uh-uh. Gets it back. Got a new shot clock. Ajuanu on the bench with four fouls. Rivia along the baseline. Terry, I think that's what they can do this year, unlike the past. They don't rely on their true sets to get them every basket. They can break off and go get their own. In the NCAA tournament, that's huge. When yes, the sir. clock is running down, you got a few guys who can create shots. And the Gales threw that one away, maybe throwing this game away. The lead is nine. Here's Mallet. Zags can play any style. They can run with you. They can pound it out in the half court. They can break off and get baskets. The most complete offensive team Mark Hughes had at Gonzaga. You look ahead to next year, Jimmy, they could be as good or better. Well, that's scary and true. Well, the ball championship weight set it by seven up. Continues. Big East championship always a great one from the gut. Set it by Aeropostale, Providence, West Virginia, Seton Hall, Georgetown. Got to have a good showing and Rutgers and Notre Dame. Same is true of the Irish coming your way. From Madison Square Garden. They all need wins, don't they? Everybody they on that graphic, they need wins. Yep. One-handed rebound for Collins. Out and running. That's not going to get there. The kick by Rivio. Look at those already in. Congratulations to Old Dominion tonight. Creighton, Dana Altman. This continues to coach his rear end off. And Niagara from the Metro Atlantic. They're in. Sit and wait now for the draw. Missouri Valley, a multi-team conference. One of those that you were talking about. Yeah, most likely will be, whether it's Northern Iowa or Wichita State, to get along in there and uh, with Southern Illinois and Creighton, yet to be determined. The Gales absolutely have gone stone cold in the second half. Turry off the control, the pendograph, the reverse lay in. <laughs> Zag time here with 951. The lead is 11. Morrison up celebrating. Terry off their fans. The number 12 team in the nation showing why right now. Talked about their transition game. This is their five man just beating everybody down the floor and has the athletic ability and the presence of mind to give it up. He knows he's off balance and here comes Pendergraf in. They run it up your backside almost like the Kansas and North Carolina teams do right now. 
on a make or a miss, they're a threat to get to the rim before you do. Got to credit the defense, too. 9.48 left in this game. So better than 10 minutes off the clock in the second half. St. Mary's shooting 14%, and they've only scored five points in the second half. Two of their losses, the Gonzaga this year, they were without Earl Knight. How much will that factor in to their seed? I don't know. I think they're solid for a three or a four. And there have been some Sundays that the Zags have been stung by their seed. I don't think it'll happen yeah. this year. Yeah, and, and it is. You, you say, well, they haven't had great success lately in the NCAA tournament. It's all to do with matchups in your seeds. I think they have deserved higher seeds than they've got. Cannot take away the fact they've beaten Oklahoma State, Georgia Tech, and Washington. Three teams that are legit Final Four contenders. Mallon right in the face of Kickert, who's struggling to get a shot off now. Mallon blocked it, and he's whistled for the foul. The Zags have played just about everybody outside their conference. Boy, what a non conference schedule. Yeah, those key wins were not in the kennel. Those are neutral floor or away wins and uh, nothing wrong with those losses now to Illinois at Missouri. We've seen what they can do to folks at St. Mary's and at uh, San Francisco. One of the teams, the only two losses for Pacific, one of them was to San Francisco. San Francisco really gave them fits. They did. They beat them once and they almost beat them the second time. Morrison had to bail them out with a three in the last possession. Well, it's a nine-point game. Kickert has 20 in the game. I think St. Mary's has to find a way to get the game scrambled a little bit and free up some three-point shooters. If it stays half-court versus half-court, the team in white is going to run away with this thing. You scramble, though. You take chances. Yep. It opens up the inside. Batista taking advantage. He has nine. That's that balance that Gonzaga can throw at you, man. Batista, Turioff, Malin. They can score. And Marigny walked. Tough game, tough tournament for Paul Marigny. Great job by Batista to seal inside and spread out. He scores, Terry, before he ever catches the basketball because of the high percentage spot on the floor that he received the ball in. And Anyone can make those shots. And with post players, it's tough to get them to realize it, but you don't have to move all that much. It's just positioning and how you set up down low on the block. Let the defense decide how they want to guard and counter it. Yeah, and let the ball do the work on the perimeter. Yeah. Here comes Marigny. Caught a little too deep, but he got it up and in anyway. Marigny has 11 in the game. He hasn't shot the ball well, though. They need back-to-back -back baskets like that to get the thing sped up a little bit, I think. And Zaga knows it, too, and they're going to back it out and make him work defensively. Wahlberg with the rebound. Rowan's got to run here. Marigny, can he get it going? There's one. Paul Marigny with 14 in the game. 5 of 13 overall. Trying all they can to speed the game up. Hard ball pressure right now and results in a foul. Went right by Marigny and Marigny fouled him. And they're going to whistle Roland actually on the foul. Looked like Marigny got him, but Roland with his second. Got a timeout here. Six point game. So a two possession game with. Just under eight left in the title matchup, the West Coast Conference. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. And in part by Hummer. Check out the H2. Hummer, like nothing else. And DirecTV. DirecTV is rethinking the way television should be. Standing room only crowd tonight here at the Levy Center in Santa Clara, California. Gonzaga with a six point lead. Morrison's had a big game once again. He's got 20. Turry off a double double, including those 10 rebounds. St. Mary's has eight three point makes in the first half, only two in the second half. So Gonzaga has gotten heels above the three point line defensively and made it tough on him. Gale's still very much in this thing. The 
if they could get some production on the other end out of Marigi, who did just hit a three. Kickert's been quiet as of late, as Ravio gets another one. There's Kickert with the 20. Last time the Zags went to this press, they got a turnover in a 10 second violation. Kind of an unforced one, too. They just, yeah, Marigi went to sleep. The other thing the press does, takes time off that shot clock. Rolling no, Turioff. And the Zags content to just walk it up now. Turioff is a terrific traffic rebounder. He's got the size and the hands, and he can jump, boom, just like that. Led the league in rebounds. Kicker fell down, Turioff, and then the foul after that. So Schulberg picks up the foul, coming over to help. ESPN's coverage of championship week continues at the Women's Big East Championship, presented by State Farm. Tuesday, UConn taking on Rutgers. Good matchup there, a couple of top 20 clubs. And then at 9 Eastern, the Horizon League Championship, Detroit and UW Milwaukee. The Titans and the Panthers on ESPN. I think Turioff's going to be a, a, a pro with a pretty long career, and here's why. I think he has a true position. At 6'11 and 245, you can make him a specialist rebounder. You can also try to make him a specialist defender, and whatever points you get out of him are bonus. But he's got that long, lengthy, lanky, quick, tough game that can be a very good four guy in that league for a while. And he can run the floor. Uh, all day long. So well that you do forget that he's 6'10 or 6'11. Yeah, yeah. Ten point lead. There's that pressure, Jimmy, which has bothered St. Mary's. Yeah, now by the time they start running their offense, there's 25 on the shot clock. Hurry off on kicker. Good job of going under on Roland, who's not a dribble and shoot guy. Very well scouted is Gonzaga on St. Mary's. And you can see them talking the entire defensive possession, too. Not what kicker wanted. Shot clock running out. Roland the heave. And the third time in this game that there's been a shot clock violation on Randy Bennett's club. And it's not easy to play solid, intense defense for the full complement of the shot clock, and, and they've done it throughout this entire game. Now that's a good yeah. sign if you're Mark Few watching the club. You know, it goes back to my point. I think Gonzaga can play any style you throw at them. And that's why I think they're a threat to win multiple games in March. Morrison along the baseline. How many of those have we seen him hit? Little eight-foot jump shot, stop and pop. Right back at you. Ten point game. EJ Roland has seven. Again, you have to honest guard all five guys for Gonzaga. They can all score in different ways. Even Knight is a threat to drive and fly around that rim and make a play on the offensive glass. You have a weak defender, the Zags will find it. Batista, kicker, knocked it out. Adam Morrison, again, he knows how to play the game. Seldom will he over-penetrate or over-dribble himself out of a shot. Has that middle game that's hard to find these days. Roney the foul, he goes to the free throw line. St. Mary's players wanted a walk, and he did take a big step. Ajuanu now out of the game. The other thing about Turioff, I think he still has a pretty good ceiling above him. He's got room to improve and grow as a player. Plays with a passion and a fire. Watch the footwork, the drop. Maybe got away with a little extra shuffle right there. I don't know, Jimmy. Yeah. You can, you're allowed to take yeah. that step, and then you just can't bring the other foot down. I think it was a, a good play. Doesn't matter what you and I think. Well, Ajuan, who's out, he just fouled out, and he did not score in tonight's game. Did not score in last night's semifinal game either. And the danger for St. Mary's right now, Terry, is this. 
you can make a good case for him. Number seven RPI, second best team in the league. There'll be leagues below him that will get more teams in. And you could make a case against him. Jimmy, they're in. They're in, baby. All right. I, I hope they're you're going. Right. I think they should be. I'm just telling you. 25 wins. They're going. Crazier things can happen. Th these guys here, no question. Gonzaga, no question. They're playing for a better seed. The only question is St. Mary's. 25 wins also last year for Utah State. Power phone calls can be made in the wee hours, <laughs> and a club like St. Mary's can be left out. It shouldn't happen, especially they, this year, but it could. They answer those phone calls in the wee hours. <laughs> they do. But they're a quality club, St. Mary's. Another double-double for Roni Turiaf. And the 13-point lead now. Seven trips to the NCAA tournament for the Zags. You forget that it just started in 1995. It seems like it's been around. Their run has been around, but now they'll make their seventh straight trip. J.P. Batista just whistled for a technical foul and obviously charged as a personal, so that's his second. Check this out. Left side of the lane, there he is. Step in, get all hooked up. What a shot to the chops, wasn't it, by Batista? Rivio pointing to his head, telling his teammates, do not do anything mentally to give St. Mary's a chance to get back in this ball game. Kickert has that longest yard mentality in his game as well. I mean, he'll sucker punch you and elbow you when he gets a shot. The Zags have a little bit of that flair about him, too. I don't mind that from a coaching standpoint. I like the toughness. Number 12, Gonzaga, looking for their seventh tournament title. Top two seeds. Kicker trying to keep him in it. Another three for Daniel Kicker. He's got 25 points. And the Gales aren't done yet. Now, great job of taking the ball away from Kicker and then throwing it back to the weak side so he can get that shot off. High low game. Turioff can't do it. Down goes Kicker. They call the walk. Now Turioff right there. That's who he fell on. Not much Kicker could do. Two pretty good ball players going at it right there. Kicker with a rebound. Now he actually didn't yeah. even fall on no. him. Dude. That's the right call. Yeah. Kicker may be a little gun shy to land on those ankles that are sore in that knee. They had something to do with that fall. Also, a couple of times on the drive tonight when it looked a little bit of a maybe a step slow. Yep. It might be because of that ankle, the knee. Well, he and uh, Andrew Bogut and Loughton from Old Dominion. Three terrific Aussies. Moving screen and Batista through the elbow. They're going to get him again. Offensive foul. Watch Batista right here. The screener. Boom. Just as soon as he leaned in with that chest and gave a little extra, the official's right on top of it. Proper call. It's one of those things you, you probably do with practice a million times and right. it's never going to get called. You get in that habit. Uh oh. Kicker. No. Didn't have the rhythm that time. Marigny high in the air for the rebound. No. Morrison, the loose ball. That was a big possession. Gonzaga has 50 to 60 different sets they can go to in late game situations to make you work defensively and get the shot from the shooter that Mark Few wants. Perfect door cut. Great pass. The hoop and the foul. Sanders picks up the foul, Jimmy. Terry, great coaching and great execution out of the Zags. Slip Morrison to the corner because you respect his three-point ability. You turn your head, boom, back cut to the rim. Not sure about the foul, but I don't know where it came from. Morrison with 25 last night. Right there tonight. Morrison's going to step to the corner, and once he gets to that spot, 
Watch his defender guarding. As soon as his defender looks at the ball, boom! Backdoor cut, finish it off. It's been all year watching Illinois do that type of thing. Oh, that ball man. Movement. You are right about that. Rolling. Wild shot. I woke up last night at 3 a.m. and went into the restroom to get a drink of water, and on my way back, you know what my thought was? I wonder if North Carolina is going to overtake Illinois in the poll. That's a sign of having March Madness, isn't it? You are warped, my man. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And, uh, it, you know, <laughs> probably shouldn't have. Just they one loss at the, at the last possession. Yeah. yeah, they did. They gained some votes. Marigny, an extra step, but he gets it to go. And almost gets the steal. Knocks it out, but it's Gonzaga basketball. Yeah, the new poll came out, and they did gain on him, but Illinois still number one. The Zags move up one, 13 to 12. But Rigney trying any way he can to keep the, K the Gales in this one. 329 left. Point lead for the Zags with 329 left in this championship game of the West Coast Conference. Don't forget, Sports Center follows the action here. Linda Cohn, John Anderson. And they'll cover the official invitations today. Those that have been invited to the dance, Iverson Shack, now be going deep. So Sports Center comes your way as soon as we are done. Randy Bennett trying to find a way to keep his club in this and make a run, and this is how he's going to try with the full court pressure right now. They'll either get back in it or they'll lose by 15 or 16. Yeah, huh? One or the other. But he has no other option. Morrison, 6 of 10 here in the second half. 14 points. 25 in all. They go to their sets, wanting Morrison to get a touch. They feel like they have a mismatch being guarded by 21. Not this time. Still got that look, though. And it's, that's a big time look and step back 6-8 being guarded by a 6-4 huh. guy that's why few goes to him no chance there Rigney right past Morrison he's got the deuce strong move for the senior he's got 18 Randy Bennett singling his glove pressure get up the floor and pressure third foul on Rigney Rigney can make tough shots. Again, the little sidestep and the sweep gets him to the rim. Morrison does a good job of not fouling and giving him a chance for three. But Rivio on the line, though, is a 91% free throw shooter. You know, he caught my attention this year with 21 points, eight assists, and no turnovers in their win over Washington. And those Washington guards now, they can get after you. And when he put those numbers up, I knew Mark Hughes' club was okay at that point guard spot. Yeah, that was that was a big question mark to start the year. Zags in the zone. Oh, halfway down for kicker. Now, you do have to extend a little bit more than this, huh? Two and a half left. That's what Randy Bennett's telling his club. Climb up into him. Get in passing lanes. We've got to gamble right now. Whether we lose by 15 or 5 is irrelevant. Look at the movement on offense for the Zags. Just enough screening and proper spacing to wind that shot clock down. Here's that matchup. Morrison right by Wahlberg. The foul. And the bucket, no chance to stay with him. 27 for Adam Morrison. And you know what's great about that possession? All other four guys on the floor for Gonzaga knew where they were going to go to at the end of the possession. There was no doubt that Adam Morrison was going to be the guy to create with four or five winding down. Terrific patience, terrific understanding of the game plan. Terrific finish by Adam Morrison. <laughs> You got to feel for Jason Walker. Yeah. He's got to get help there. You got to come out to respect the three point shot. If you do that, though, he's got the quickness to go by it. 
Morrison, a kid that uh, pricks his finger about every time out and tests his blood sugar level because he's diabetic. Sometimes has to give himself a shot maybe once or twice during a ball game. As a kid was a ball boy for the Zags. Kicker, contact, got the bucket. Like seven for Daniel. Quickly got it in, then they did not allow St. Mary's to take a timeout. Stepped out, boom, quickly got it back in. And the clock continues to tick because of it. At what point do you start to foul? I'm surprised they have it. I mean, you're down 10 with a minute 30 to go. Mark Hughes is going to call on one of the sets now and make sure the right guy kicks the shot. Boom. Right down Broadway from Allen. 12 point lead. Auburn to three. And a quick timeout from Randy Bennett. So the lead is now nine for the Zags. Just over a minute. And one timeout left for St. Mary's. So strategy right now, if you're Randy Bennett and the game, it's a, a three possession game. Go for the steal right away. If you don't, you start fouling here. Have to. I, I don't like fouling before the ball's ever passed in. Give your chance uh, to come up with a steal. And if you don't have it, boom, the quick hard hack. But you're up against the free throw club Gonzaga that's uh, number one in the league at 75%. That's the other reason why I think they're a threat to win multiple games in March. They can finish you off from different areas. Pretty impressive the last uh, two, three minutes, too, running their offense, knowing exactly what they want to do with the basketball and when they want to do it. This is a club that you think can go pretty deep, huh? I think they can. You look at their wins they've already had this year. I mean, where's the weak link? They defend with tenacity. They have great offense. They have a star in Adam Morrison and a point guard that does all the plays you need to win tight ball games. So they don't get the steal. Marigny fouls Earl Knight. And that's the fourth on Paul Marigny. He's had a terrific career at St. Mary's. That's his, the senior from Oakland, first team all conference. Almost 17 a game this year. Well, they are 19 and 4 this year, St. Mary's is, with Marigny on the floor. Missed the first, first nine games because of academics. That's the other plus for St. Mary's on their resume. When they've had a complete team now, they've run off some awfully good numbers. And that will be part of the judgment on them, just like B.J. Elder at Georgia Tech. Yeah, it should be. And yeah. you're exactly right. And with those numbers, they should get in. There's no way the number seven RPI WCC only gets one team. St. Mary's has to be the second team out of this league this year. So you're coming around to my way of thinking is what you're saying. Yeah, because of the ah. common sense index. Ah, I see. Forget about those RPIs and strength of schedules and things that power conferences can pull. <laughs> common sense index will get St. Mary's in. Morris in the foul. So a 10 point game. And Rigney will go to the line as you look at the resume. 11 and 3 this year in the conference. Best conference record in 16 years for the Gales. Well, in, in the conference, the best it's ever been when you talk to the folks that have been around the WCC for 20 years. This is the pinnacle of the WCC this year. Their schedule strength is 101. But that should not affect them. They've played Memphis. They've played Mississippi State. They've played the Zags. Their schedule strength is high because they're forced to play some teams in this league that have an awfully high RPI. They beat those teams and their RPI goes higher. It's not fair to clubs like St. Mary's. Yep, I agree. Money in the game now. Marigny with a double double. He's got 10 rebounds to go along. There goes Morrison. Oh! Career high for Adam Morrison. 30. Marigny scrambling. Turry off the rebound. They're going to foul him. Sanders with the foul. And this one perhaps in the books. 37.6 left. And the Zags looking for their seventh tournament championship.
may have just wrapped it up. You can talk about Francisco Garcia. Rashad McCants is on that same two guard, three guard type person. If I have to pick one, I'm taking number three in white. You think so? Yep. If you lose, you can sleep at night if Adam Morrison is your guy, because he brought it all. Turry off with 17 points, 14 rebounds. They've won the regular season. They're going to win the conference tournament, and they're hungry. I like teams when that bracket comes out that are hot. Certainly they are. Healthy, they are, and hungry. The three H's are important that second weekend of March. Give me those again. Hot, healthy, and hungry. I like that. Sports Center to follow. Kicker falls down. Mallon the rebound. They're chasing Rivio. Don't want to follow them though, but they're going to have to. The 91% free throw shooter. So Mark Few going to win another tournament. West Coast Conference Coach of the Year once again. 20 wins plus every year that he's been at the helm. And the Zags, this will be six of the last seven tourneys won by Gonzaga. The only thing that Mark Few sacrifices is the million dollar contract by being the head coach at Gonzaga. Everything else about that program can match the top 10 programs in the country. Sold out arena, can recruit on a national level, get into the NCAA tournament every year. They've got it going on. Got that program to a point where recruiting, not that it's ever easy, but it becomes easier and easier to sell that program. With the new building now, the new kennel, and the schedule that they play, it is a big time program. So 14.2 left here at the Levy Center. Sports Center up next. Don't forget, Linda Cohn, John Anderson, with the dance invitations to the NCAA tournament. Iverson Shaq, John B. Gone Deep, stories that they're covering, and much more in just a moment. Well, Terry and I, you and I both left last night questioning St. Mary's. I think they answered the question in our eyes tonight. Yes, yeah, they, they, they have for me. Absolutely. And uh, heck of a first half for Randy Bennett's club. Gonzaga just too much in the second half. But an entirely different club in this game. Collins got some hops. And then commits the foul. Clear the bench. Let the stars come out and enjoy it. And there they go. And Morrison leading the cheers. Adam Morrison with 30 points in the game. And Jimmy, not really forcing anything either. I mean, here's a guy who's normally, you don't see him force a shot. You don't see him in a hurry. He doesn't rush. But I go back to how I described him in the Star Watch. Don't hack him off. Yeah. If you hack him off, yeah. he'll drop 30 on you. Well, for 21, five for five from the line, five boards, three assists. Not a bad line. And for Mark Few, it is hard to do it year in, year out when everybody expects you to do it. And it seems like you got nothing really to win, everything to lose. Gonzaga wins once again. Sixth title in the last seven years. They're seventh overall. Mark Few congratulating St. Mary's on the game in an outstanding year. And Randy Bennett has had one. 25 wins, but this is the eighth loss for the Gales. The Zags win it here at Santa Clara. Kicker a huge effort for the Gales. In that first half, he was just red hot from beyond the arc. 
So Gonzaga moves to 25 and 4. Marigny in the losing effort had a double double for the Gales. 80 to 67. Your final score. The number 12 team in the nation rolling here. Don't forget Sports Center coming up next. For Jimmy Dykes, I'm Terry Gannon. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. They're handing out the trophies. Morrison, the star once again. Goodbye, everybody. Hello. 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 Sully. Sully, you there? Oh, there.